Can you design and print a working duct fan and measure how good it is? Let's find out. This is my laser cutter and when it is cutting, especially when it is cutting plywood, it is producing a lot of films, films that you don't want to breathe in and you can't just keep them inside the clothes machine uh, because that would destroy the electronics, optics and mechanics. So you need a fan. But normal fan is usually not powerful enough for stuff like this. So most likely for lasers, for things where you have to move a lot of air fast, a duct fan is a perfect choice. And here is my ducted fan uh, for the laser. Actually, laser is in the other room and I have this thing right here uh, just to make it a little bit more quiet. As you can see, there is a hose that goes to the laser and the air is sucked up from the laser here and it goes through this hose outside. The initial idea for this project, for designing and 3D printing my own duct fan, was to actually use it with the snap maker and the laser module, because when you are engraving on plywood, it is also producing a lot of films, and I wanted to keep those two systems, my laser cutter and the snap maker, completely separately, so I don't want to connect the snap maker to my duct fan of the laser cutter. And yes, of course, you can buy the enclosure and the filter for the snap maker, but this stuff is kind of expensive, so designing and 3D printing my own uh, duct fan was actually a pretty cool idea, but then I thought there is even a better use case for such a duct font. So a few weeks ago I bought this, and this thing is a powder coating gun, and this thing is partially 3D printed, which is pretty amazing, and yes, it works, I already tested it, and it works even better than I expected. So now I want to build a powder coating booth, you know that place where you have nice light and filters, and everything you need for powder coating. I already designed and printed all of the parts. Hopefully everything will fit together. Here I have them, here is the turbine. And I will use for that a very popular 775 motor, because why not? And maybe we'll also test some different motors and different propellers, turbines, just to see how it works. So now it's assembly time. So now I'm just connecting the plus and minus from the motor to the power supply. This power supply is actually 12 volts and 10 amps, so that's 120 watts, which should be way more than enough for such a 775 motor. So here I have everything prepared. I have the safety glasses on. The GoPro is in the slow motion mode, so that in case it will explode, uh, I will have a really nice shot. Hopefully it is not going to explode. There is not really enough power actually for explosion, so I just have to plug this thing in, here everything is fine, and now I just need to flip a switch, let's turn on the GoPro, and let's see what happens. Nothing. Okay, it is working. So I just need to swap those wires, and it will spin in the proper direction, and let's plug that, and let's turn on. All right, that is a lot more powerful. New motor mount is ready. I am already printing the fan, the same thing, but with different shaft diameter. And as for now, I will do the test with this propeller that I have to cut because it's just too big to fit inside this tube. And if you are following my projects, everything that I'm doing for long enough, you may remember this project, a Ludwig drone, as you can see, it's pretty dusty. And as for now, this will be the source of parts for this project because I want to use this ESC and this motor because there is the BEC, battery eliminating circuit inside the ESC. I think that's the proper name. Uh, and I will use that to power my Arduino. I'm
Before I continue, a quick ad from the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people. Whatever you want to explore, you can find it on Skillshare. There are thousands of classes without any ads on any topic you want. One of the classes I really liked was YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD by MKBHD. Marquez explains the whole process of creating a YouTube video and goes into details of planning, writing, shooting, editing and posting. My video making process is very similar, but thanks to this class I know what I can improve. If you prefer gardening, woodworking, business or design, they also have classes on that and the best thing is that you can take as many classes as you want on such a huge variety of topics. And the first 1000 of my subscribers that will click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So go check it out, thanks a lot for sponsoring and back to the video. Yesterday I spent quite a lot of time on reading and I almost bought the anemometer because there is a way to actually calculate the flow with the anemometer, that's the uh, wind speed measuring device. If you know the cross section of the nozzle, in this case I of course know that, so I should be able to calculate that, but there is even a simpler method to actually measure the flow. And you can do that with a garbage bag. So those tests are a little bit more tricky than I initially thought, but it is really not that bad and after a few tries it is actually quite easy to do. I also asked my dad for help, just to help me with the stopwatch and you know to get more precise results. And I measured everything at least three times and then I took the average of each reading. And I measured the flow for each throttle value from 10% to 100%. And then I measured that with the holes and without the holes just to compare the results. It's time to go back to 775 motor and check the flow with the hose and without the hose and then I will compare the results of brushless DC motor versus 775. And here is the data from the experiments. As you can see, the BLDC motor when it comes to the flow is two times more powerful than 775, but also 775 is a lot more quiet. And when you connect the holes, the flow is actually reduced by half. And just to compare, here is a duct fan that I'm using with the laser cutter. It costs 417 zloty, which is a bit over $100, and the flow is 400 cubic meters per hour. And in case of a 3D printed version, you need a $10 motor, about 300 grams of filament, and a power supply. Of course, the flow is smaller, because right here, let's say the peak flow would be about 200 cubic meters per hour with the max throttle. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take the measurements for throttle bigger than 80%, because actually the turbine wasn't really that well attached to the shaft of the motor and pretty often at that big throttle was falling off the shaft. Shit. Honestly, I have no idea how to properly design a turbine or fan or propeller and if you have any tips on that, you can leave that in the comments and I would really appreciate that. Maybe in the next video I will print like 20 different versions and I will test all of them and find the best working one to improve the efficiency of this thing. If you want to download the STL files and everything, you can find that in the description. And in the next video, as I said, maybe I will work on improving that or I will build the powder coating station because that's also a really, really cool project. Thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thanks to you for watching till the end.